Gospel of March the 21st, 2014, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priest and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a winepress in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent another servants, more, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. When, when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will, post, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce of at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done, and it is, a wonder, it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard these parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The, te the, the killer tenants of the vineyard can only be found in Matthew. And it is very interesting that precisely those that were supposed to be expecting the Son of God, the Messiah, were the ones that rejected him. And that is the reason why the Lord is telling them that these tenants were doing exactly how they will how they would do it. The Lord is prophesizing what they were going to do. The chief priests the elders, the Pharisees, the scribes, rejected the Son of God. And they thought that he was the Son, that they could take away his inheritance. They were upset with him. The parable depicts what happened to Jesus, because they really took him out of the vineyard, meaning Jerusalem, killed him outside and left it there, in the Golgotha. In the Cal on the Calvary. But just as the Lord says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That stone, which is the rock, the quintessential rock, the fundamental rock of the Lord, Jesus Christ, who was rejected by, this, by the builders. Who were those builders? The builders were exactly the chief priests and those that were on charge to build up the people of God. The people of God had been chosen to be the inheritance of God. Yet, the chief priests, the elders and others, did not want to have the Lord and His visitation. So they rejected Him. They rejected Him when they condemned Him unlawfully to death on the cross. But we know that God himself made the rock the cornerstone when he was resurrected, and no one can deny that. What is going to happen is exactly this, what they said. I tell you the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. We can perhaps think about this in terms of history, but we would be mistaken. 
It is, yes, in terms of history, but also in terms of today. Because we can also become like those tenants that did not pay the fruits. We can also reject the rock. As a matter of fact, I could tell you that every time we commit a grave sin, again, we kill the Son of God in ourselves. We kill, to say some words, not actually do it, but we kill Him, His presence in us, every time we decide to commit a grave sin. And we are called not to do that. Of course, because of our tendency, our natural tendency, fallen tendency of our fallen stature, we tend to commit sins. One thing is to fall even on a grave sin without wanting because of lack of ascetism, of training. And an entirely different is to keep on falling and even to program your confessions, your reconciliations, thinking that probably next week or in a couple of weeks I'm going to commit the same sin. That is useless. We have to have a sincere effort and commitment to change. And if we have that, we should also start praying that our Lord might have mercy on us and start changing our hearts. Now, we are and require we are required to have fruits. What kind of fruits? Of faith, of hope, and of love. But especially love. Because by the end of our life we will be tested on love. They will review our acts. The acts that we do every day. We have to remember. We are to love our God with all our conscience, with all our life, with all our strength that all our life, at least the time that we're conscious, and we must try to be conscious all the time, meaning that when we sleep, we sleep, but meaning to avoid alcohol or drugs, that all our acts in our life glorify God, that we perform our life as we really are before the face of God. Let us humbly ask our Lord that this land that we are traveling might prepare our hearts to become purer, that we might present ourselves before our Lord on His resurrection. God bless you all.